You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how you can make your very own DC electrical motor. I should start off by saying this project is more for the beginner end of the spectrum. Basically by that what I mean is that this electrical motor that we'll be making has no practical use. That is except for the use of being an excellent way to demonstrate how an electric motor works. In a previous project where we transmitted energy wirelessly, I showed the relationship between electricity and magnetism, and we used this relationship to transmit the energy wirelessly. So if you haven't yet, go watch that episode or at least the beginning of it, and that'll be linked in the description below. So the first thing we're going to need to do is take some wire just like this. If you don't have magnet wire like this, you can buy some, or you can even just salvage it out of old electronics. For instance, I salvaged this wire out of a TV. Now leaving a few inches on the end, I'm going to take some of this wire and wrap it around this Expo marker here to make a nice coil. Once you've finished coiling the wire on the marker, go ahead and slip it off. And now that we have it off, go ahead and take this side and pull it on through. And do the same with the other side. By looping it through a couple of times, it should hold the coil in position. Since this is magnet wire, that means that it's regular copper wire with an enamel around it that prevents it from conducting with itself. So if we're going to be connecting power to it, we need to go ahead and sand off the ends here. By sanding it, we're sanding away the enamel and exposing the copper. You should be able to notice just like this how so we have the copper exposed over here while the enamel is still over here. I'm going to use a piece of cardboard like this to set it all up on. However, if you do have it, you can use foam or even wood to make it look nicer. And now you're going to want to take two paper clips and bend them into shapes just like this. The next thing you're going to need is going to be a magnet just like this. Next, I'm going to place my magnet on the cardboard, and using the nail, I'm going to mark it end to end. Now I'm going to take those paper clips and insert them into the cardboard. As you put them in, push down and then bend back up. By bending it like this, we can see on the other side it gives us a nice little spot to attach some tape to hold it into place. Now go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other paper clip on the other hole that you marked. Now you should have something that looks like this. Go ahead and take the magnet and carefully insert it in between the two paper clips. Now take a AA battery just like this. And using tape, attach one wire to the positive side, and attach another wire onto the negative side. And now attach each end from the battery onto each of the paper clips just like this. Now go ahead and take the cradle that we made a second ago. Be sure to check that the two extruding wires are very aligned in the center, so that it can spin freely on itself just like this. And now as you can see when I put back in the coil, it'll begin spinning. So now you know how to make your very own electric motor. Now the rest of the video is going to be explaining how this process of turning electrical energy into kinetic energy takes place. When the DC current goes through the coil of copper wire, it produces a magnetic field. Now this magnetic field, just like any other one, is going to have a north pole and a south pole. As I'm sure most of you know, north repels north and south repels south, and north is attracted to south. And so if we go back to this coil, it's creating a magnetic field in such a way that one side, like this side, would be north, and then this side would be south. Now if this side is north and this side is north, then it's going to repel the motor, thus pushing it this way. When it pushes it this way, it jostles a little bit, and this disconnects the DC current from running through it. Then as it comes back around, it gets reconnected and repelled. And so this is what makes the coil spin. In most DC motors, it'll actually have a thing called a commutator. What this means is that one end of the coil is going to be connected to these metal parts here. And then down here, you'll have what is called a brush. In many commercial DC motors, you'll find that the brush is made out of something like carbon. So basically something that can conduct, but can also handle quite a bit of heat. And then the brush is going to be connected to one end of the battery. And the other end is going to go to the other end of the coil. So what happens is that as the wheel spins, every time it's a conductive part, it'll start that magnetic field again, thus repelling it. But then this will move and the brush will touch the non-conductive part, so the magnetic field will shut off. But then it will start up again next time it hits the next conductive surface. This repeating cycle creates the constant repulsion of the coil, and that repulsion of the coil makes it go round and round. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you want a science question that you want answered, even if it doesn't deal with electricity, then leave it in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, I would appreciate it if you'd leave it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see this channel's weekly science videos, go and hit the subscribe button wherever it is. Remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make your very own miniature Tesla coil.